How's the retired life treating you so far? So, I knew you guys were going to ask me that, so I was like, I prefer the term transitioned. Um, just transitioned into like more, you know, promoting events and still want to be evolved. Actually, you might see more of me now, so it's, it's been good so far. Life is good. If you're reluctant to use the term retired, does that mean potentially it's something you could reconsider down the track? You never know, but at this point it's not something that I'm thinking about. How did you reach the decision? Because it seemed like something that was just spur of the moment almost. I mean, were you thinking about that going into the mm -hmm. fight that it was a possibility? No, honestly. Um, I just knew after like the first exchange that I just didn't like want to do it anymore. So it was just kind of one of those things that just like suck it out. But I knew I had a lot more to give and uh, I just didn't give it. So I don't know. It's just one of those things. It's kind of, it's kind of odd to be honest. But um, yeah, just lacking a little bit of the, the competitive edge to want to punch people in the face. So. <laughs> How did you get through the rest of the fight? That's amazing that you knew right away the first exchange. How did you get through the rest of the fight? Uh, you know, I just was like, I'm not a, you know, I don't give up, but um, that's all. You know, I just, I didn't want to give up, you know, so I just, I went in there, but I just couldn't pull, pull, out, pull out of myself what I needed to really, um, you know, make the fight winnable. So yeah, it was interesting. It's kind of crazy because here you are a cornerstone of the women's bantamweight division. You've been there for you know such a long time, and it was such a spur of the moment retirement. Do you ever think back in that moment and think like you know maybe I should have waited the press conference, or maybe I would have you know taken a bit more time? Are, are you happy with sort of the way you retired? Mm, I don't know. I mean, I just look at it as something that uh, it, it happened. Maybe I could have you know. I think my management would have appreciated it if I would have waited. <laughs> But uh, no, I just knew it, so I was like, you know, I just uh, wanted to kind of get it off my chest. <clears throat> was it uh, was it a situation where before the fight you actually had plans and fighting again? What were your goals before you decided to retire at the start of that fight? Were you still planning on going for the title one more time before you made that decision at the beginning of the fight? Yeah, for sure. I, I planned on winning that fight and uh, going on for another title run, but, you know, at the end of that, I just, I knew, yeah. With everything that's going on in the division, Ronda Rousey fighting at 207, I mean, was that at all a factor in your mind when you were thinking about retirement, that third fight, the fact that it was, it was going to be a huge event, the fact that you just headlined UFC 200 and probably at the peak of your popularity as a fighter? What was the question? The fact that there was that potential third fight with Ronda Rousey around the corner if she would have won at UFC 207, an opportunity to possibly headline another big event if you had sort of stayed around and saw what happened in the division. Yeah, of course, but um, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't change the situation, you know. So, I mean, ideally, I would have loved for that to happen, but it doesn't look like it's going to now. How will you look back on your career? I mean, you reached the top in Strike Force. You reached the top in the UFC. I mean, do you feel like you did everything you set out to accomplish, or do you, or you have regrets? I mean, how will you look back on it? Um, there's still more that I would have liked to accomplish. I never think that I would have been, you know, feeling like I did it all ever. You know, there's always someone else to fight or someone else to beat. So, but you know, I look back on it fondly. I think that it was a great, a great run, and I spent over half my life doing contact sports. And I'm still going to be grappling and things like that. So I actually have a, a grappling match coming up December 11th against Jessica I. So um, that will be for Chael, Sh Chael Sonnen's show. And um, I'm excited to, to do that. You think that'll keep your itch for competition kind of fulfilled? Because we always hear athletes after and say, you know, the one thing I miss is I, I still needed some kind of competition. You think grappling will be enough? Yeah, I love jujitsu a lot. And I'm really excited to display it on a you know, on a different field, you know, it's different when you're fighting and you have to worry about people trying to get back up all the time, you know, so it's different. So I think this is going to be a whole new avenue to, you know, express myself as an athlete. So I think it'll be fun. Are you content at the moment? <laughs> I'm happy. No, oh, I'm happy. I'm really happy right now. I just came from Hawaii and uh, now I'm here in Australia. I'm going to Sydney, going to Singapore after this to do a seminar and, and train out there with some of the best. And then uh, I'll head to Portland and do the grappling match. and. Um, being a bit of a gypsy at the moment, so <laughs> I'm enjoying life and seeing the world. Dana kind of hinted at the, at the press conference that night that you know he had plans for you that he'd like to see you in a broadcast or you know an analyst type role. Have you started to have those discussions yet? Yeah, absolutely. It looks like something will come to fruition with Fox, you know, at some point. So we'll just kind of see how that all unfolds, you know. And I think there's going to be a lot of things that I have to look forward to, but I got to kind of sit down and talk to my management and really see exactly what, you know, what's next. Just curious, uh, on Dana White, he did mention at the post-fight press conference that there was a moment where you, you didn't really want to go to the hospital afterwards. You guys might have had back and forth. W w was that true? Can you tell us about that? 
Yeah, I was pissed. I didn't want to go to the hospital because I was fine. I knew I was fine. You know, they didn't make me go to the hospital after I fought Amanda, and, you know, she knocked my block off. So I knew that if any time I should have gone to the hospital, probably should have been then. But, <laughs> I mean, there wasn't really anything that happened in the fight with Raquel that I feel like was you know, hospital deeming worthy. So it just pissed me off because I was like, I have an after party to go to. <laughs> like my friends here. I'm in New York City. I do not want to go, you know, spend a couple hours in the ER when I know I've been doing this long enough to know I didn't I didn't need to go. What, what was that night like? I mean, you just mentioned you're in New York, you've got an after party. It kind of seems like you sort of put that fight and that night behind you. What was the rest of your night like? Well, I spent a couple hours in the hospital. <laughs> After Dana saying like he was literally going to leave the event and come hunt me down if I didn't go. So um, I did that and then I, I made like a very, I was, wasn't able to go very long at the after party, but I was able to make that and just hang out with my friends. And, uh, you know, I looked at it more as like a celebration than anything, you know, a culmination of a good career. What was the reaction from your coaches? Because obviously they weren't expecting it either if you made the decision right away. What was their reaction afterwards in talking to you? You know, um, well, they were just both had different reactions, you know. Um, you know, Brian was a little bit different in his reaction than Rob, but, um, you know, he, at the end of the day, they both support my decision. And, uh, you know, Rob, Rob just gave me a big hug and was like, you know, support and love you either way, so. Have you had many uh, fighters, any competitors reach out to you after the announcement? Have I had what? Any of the other fighters reach out to you? Yeah. Yeah, quite. I mean, I've had a, a tremendous amount of support, you know. Even Big Nog over here was just, you know, when we first saw each other the day, was just, you know, congratulatory on, on a good career. And everyone's been so awesome and so supportive. And, you know, I definitely appreciate that in the, in the transition of everything. Man, that's a good question. Um, not the way that I used to, but... <laughs> But um, it's, I, I guess what's really difficult for me to decide is like what we're going to get out of Rousey. You know, is she doing it because she wants to or is she doing it because she feels obligated? Is that knockout still in the back of her mind? Is she going to be punch shy? Is she going to have the same? You know, it's kind of like I remember when I was skiing for the first time. I was like five years old and I just blitzed down the hill. I had no fear whatsoever. The first time that I wrecked really, really hard is when you realize like, oh, this is actually this is actually dangerous. There's things that can happen to you that you don't, you know, don't realize the first few times when you haven't fallen. So you kind of wonder what, what has that put in the back of her mind? Is it going to affect her? I don't know, you know, but I know that Amanda's a very solid fighter and she hits like a ton of bricks. So she's a very worthy opponent and it should be interesting. I'll probably know this answer, but who do you want to win? I want Amanda to win. Yeah, you know, she's a sweetheart and I think she's a, she's a good girl. So I think she deserves it. A lot of people are looking forward to a potential fight between you and Chris Cyborg. Obviously, that's not going to happen now. But a lot of people are just curious about what's going to happen next with her. She's a huge UFC star. I'm just wondering, from your perspective, as one of the biggest stars in the UFC when it comes, uh, obviously, to the division, what would you like to see happen next? Would you like them to bring in a division specifically so she can defend her Invicta title in the UFC shows? Do you think there's some super fights out there for her? What do you think can be done with her next? Mm, that's so interesting. Um, it depends if 135 is off the table. I don't know, but ideally, I think if she could come to 135, that would be ideal because I think that would make the competition, you know, fair across the board. Catch weights are always fun and interesting. I enjoy watching them myself, but I feel like there isn't a deep enough 145 pound division to put it into the UFC yet. Not that there's not talented girls there, but there's just not enough. You know, she's already run through most of the girls at 145, so you add the division after she's already beat everyone, there's not really much left for her at 145. So it just makes you wonder. That's a tough question. You know, I'm glad that I don't have to <laughs> be the person who figures that out.